No. Being an outlaw does not necessarily mean being the bad guy. Whenever rights are being violated in the name of law and authority, then it's the duty of every decent moral person to oppose that. First with their words, and then with actions if necessary. Do I respect the law? Not really. If by the law you mean whatever the politicians tell us to do. I respect life and liberty. The right of every individual to be left alone as long as they're not hurting anyone. When the law goes against that, which it does all the time, then it doesn't deserve our respect or our obedience. Am I saying that sometimes it's good to break the law? Yeah, absolutely. When you look back through history, most major injustices have been carried out in the name of law. And most of human progress has been the result of those people who dared to stand up and resist those who claim the right to rule. The difference between a bad outlaw and a good outlaw is the difference between violent aggression and defensive force. Uh, robbery, threats, assault, and murder are wrong because those things violate the rights of others, not because of a rule written on a piece of paper. And when those in power write laws saying that they're allowed to rob, threaten, assault, murder, that's not okay. And that's when you need good outlaws to make things right. Yes, I am anti-government, because government is always the enemy of freedom and justice. Political power is never about getting along or peacefully coexisting. It's about people trying to use the machine called the government to rob and control others. However good your intentions are, if you still imagine that a ruling class can be a good thing, if you still think that the world would be great if only the right person were in charge and calling the shots, you seriously need to rethink things. Am I being extreme? If you want to say that I'm extreme in my support of freedom and my opposition to authoritarian domination, I take that as a compliment. I'm all for cooperation and compromise on a lot of things, but never on principles. I'd have to be a coward to condone a certain level of injustice just so I don't get called extreme. Am I a tolerant person? Um, I'm completely tolerant of all sorts of viewpoints, belief systems, and lifestyles, whether I personally approve of them or not. But when it comes to anyone committing aggression against another, no, I'm not tolerant of that at all. No one should be. And if you're still voting for people who promise to use the power of government to tax and control whoever you don't like, don't pretend to be tolerant. People need to understand, as long as you think that your ideas should be forced on others and others think their ideas should be forced on you, political con men will always use that to empower themselves, while pitting the rest of us against each other, based on race, religion, income level, lifestyles, nationality, basically any difference they can find, until you stop falling for the politicians' divide and conquer tactics until you're willing to allow everyone else to be truly free, whether you like them or approve of their choices or not, then don't expect to be free yourself. Now, I'm not looking for a fight. My goal is peaceful coexistence, but those who seek political power do not share that goal, and they have no intention of leaving us alone. They're all about telling you what you must do, what you can't do, how much money you have to give them, uh, and then sending their thugs there for you if you disobey. That's what government does, and it's the opposite of getting along. Yes, what I advocate is far outside of the mainstream. If you want a fundamental change in the world, you have to start with a fundamental change inside your own head. People keep believing in doing the same things and wonder why nothing changes. They keep voting for people who promise to take care of them and decide what's best for them, while basically tossing them some scraps while taxing them to death. They keep wanting some political savior to come along with some authoritarian master plan that will save the day. Well, we've been trying that for millennia, with consistently horrible results. People have to grow up and stop looking for a leader to save the world. The individual, the family, the community, these are real, these are what matter. Those in power keep doing their song and dance, pretending that if they only had a little more power and passed a few more laws, then everything will be fixed. 
Why does anyone still believe that? As long as you're looking to some ruler to save the day, you will always be disappointed until the last shred of freedom is stripped from you. No, there's no reason to be proud of being a law-abiding taxpayer. Obedience isn't a virtue. Why do you have a conscience and the ability to judge right from wrong if you're just supposed to ignore all that and do whatever some alleged authority tells you to? Uh, morality matters. Legality does not. Those who are proud to pay taxes and obey politicians' commands are mostly good people, but just horribly misguided. The lies we're taught about authority keep tricking decent people into enriching and empowering liars and crooks. If you want to change the world, you have to start by recognizing the lies yourself. I'd run for office when hell freezes over. <laughs> politics will never solve anything, because politics and government are the problem. The left and right scream at each other, but neither is morally consistent, and neither is on the side of freedom or justice. The only discussion you'll ever hear in the mainstream media is bickering over whether Republican politicians should spend your money and run your life, or whether Democrat politicians should spend your money and run your life. How about this radical idea that you should be able to spend your own money and run your own life? When have you ever heard that idea on CNN or the evening news? Oh, I'm not on the left-right scale at all. Uh, most people think that all there is is arguing over what kind of centralized authoritarian control should rule the world. Uh, then they think that picking what they consider to be the lesser of two evils is the only option they have. But political power, whether it's far left, far right, or anything in between, only leads to wealth and power for the elite, and oppression, poverty, and debt for everyone else. To think that any political party has any intention of changing that is beyond naive. People don't run for political office with the intention of leaving you alone. They do it to acquire power. Power over you and everyone else. And they will always tell the rest of us that we're just stupid, violent animals. And that without them controlling us, we could never survive. Which is a ridiculous lie. No, I'm not saying that everyone would be nice if not for government. Obviously, human beings are far from perfect, but giving some of those imperfect people the power to forcibly control everyone else does not improve things. If any idea is silly and utopian, it's the idea that if you give a bunch of politicians dominion over the rest of us, that they will use that power to protect and serve us. When has that ever happened? And why does anyone think it ever will? Some people seem to think that as long as they have their beer and their widescreen TV, everything must be okay. But there's a lot of serious injustice going on in this country and many others that all decent people should be angry about. And righteous anger isn't driven by hatred, but by the love of humanity and justice, and understanding what society could be and will be once people dare to question things and do what's right instead of just doing and believing whatever those in power tell them to. For humanity to be what it should be, people need to question and reject the authoritarian indoctrination we were all fed. More people need to learn about things like the non-aggression principle, the concept of self-ownership, the idea of voluntarism, and a stateless society. Really, the truth I'm trying to get people to see here is pretty simple and obvious, but we've been deliberately taught not to see it. Now, it may make people uncomfortable to hear this, but really what the world needs is not law-abiding taxpayers, not people mindlessly obeying and paying tribute to a ruling class. What it needs is more outlaws, the good kind, people willing to think for themselves and be willing to stand against the powers that be, to disobey, to resist. If you really care about liberty and justice, maybe it's time you became an outlaw too.